what was the kind of progression that we had a look at? Arithmetic. Arithmetic, very good. So this is our first one in here. And what's going to proceed from here is stuff that we established over the last two lessons. So firstly, how do you make an arithmetic progression? How do you go from one term to the next? What do you do? What operation do you do? You add. And specifically, what you add is a common difference. Very good. And because it's a common difference, we call that value, we call it D for difference. No big deal. Okay. Now, if you get given a, a progression of some kind, and they say, hey, can you prove that that is an arithmetic progression? Um, there's something that you can state, an equality you can state, that connects to this. So if you can show that this is true, it will definitely be an arithmetic progression. Does anyone remember? It's right back at the definition of what an AP is. I'll give you a clue. It starts with a T. Yeah. T, you go ahead. T2 minus T1. So I'm just going to pause there, right? So what we're looking at is two consecutive terms. And if you look at that difference, what do we want that to be equal to? T3 T minus T2, which, which in turn should be that common difference. They should be the same thing, right? Um, and naturally, we could continue this for the rest of the terms, term 3, term 4, term 5, etc. But really, this is all you need to establish it, okay? Now we developed some formulas. Um, yesterday we did this one, but if I can cast your mind back, um, this is T2, T1, T3. What's Tn? What's our formula for this when it comes to an arithmetic progression? Max, do you remember it? No? Someone else? Um, is it the A and L one? Okay, we'll start with an A. a plus. And then, do you want to finish this off? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, what are we going to, what are we going to, what operation do we need in here? Is a plus sign, right? It's a plus sign. Yep. And then I, what's, what's with the n's, right? n minus 1 times that common difference. Okay, do you remember that? Why was it n minus 1, by the way? I'm trying to remember why is it n minus 1. Removing the first term. Yeah, you, you don't add any lots of that common difference to the first term. If you want to think about it this way, what's t1? t1 is a plus 0. Term 1 is a, after all. Okay, now, the most recent thing, we had to have a look at some pictures and animations for this. If you want to do the sum of the first n terms, firstly, how do we write it, by the way? 2a. Ooh, okay, you're, you're going straight to the formula. So first, we, we generally say s for sum, right? And we did say, we did establish two different ways to actually write it. Now, Sarang, you've actually begun kind of in the middle of one of them. I'm going to write down the 2a. But uh, yeah, there's a half out of the front. There's more than just a half, isn't there? There's an n on 2. Can we finish the rest of this? It's very similar to what we've already got. Plus, plus that, right? Plus this. Now, this was actually not the first formula that we came up with. There was a simpler one that came before it. We, it was this thing with first and last terms. Edison, can you fill us in? Fantastic. So a plus l indicating your first term and your last term. Okay. Now, remember, these two are the same thing, just dressed up differently. So we use both of them in order to be able to say, do you have the last term? Or just, just use this formula. If you know, if you don't know what the last term is, then use this formula. Okay? You use it according to what is appropriate. Alright, so this is what happens when you're adding a common difference. But this is not the only kind of progression that we're interested in. Okay? The other thing, and we're actually going to spend much more time on this than the other because it's got more interesting applications. It's not what we call an arithmetic progression. It's called a geometric progression. Okay? So instead of going from one term to the next by adding, what's another operation we could use? Multiplication. Yeah, multiplication, right? Um, someone did say minus, but uh, subtraction is kind of like addition but backwards. I guess if you added a common difference that was Negative, you'd have that effect. Okay, so let's think about this. When you multiply to get from one term to the next, right? You wouldn't call that a common difference between the terms. We would call that rather than a common difference. We would call it a common ratio. So no surprises to guess what letter we tend to indicate that with. <laughs> I love that you said D because the D is over there. We usually use R, yeah, R for ratio. Okay. Now, think about this for a second. I'll just write a quick example on the board. If I had a sequence like 2, and then 6, and then, I guess, 18, and so on, right? If I'm telling you that's a geometric progression, I'm, I've got a common ratio of what, by the way, in this case? 
3, because I'm multiplying by 3 each time. How do I prove that? How do I actually show it in a way that's sort of analogous to this? It's not going to have to do with subtraction. What am I going to do, Strang? T2 divided by T1. Oh, very good. So instead of undoing addition with subtraction, I'm going to undo multiplication with division. Right? So we divide. Um, when I take that ratio, what should it be equal to? Uh, uh, it should be equal to the common ratio, but I'll, I'll name that based on, based on the rest of the ratios that I also observe. So they should be the same, and um, we would call that R. Okay, now, let's think about this for a second. Coming back to this 2, 6, 18 example that I just kind of pulled out of thin air. If we call the first term 2, and our common ratio in this case would be, what did we say it was? 3, three in this case. Um, I could write the next term as a times 3. Do you agree with that? Mm -hmm. And then I could write the next term as a times 3, three times 3, because I've got to take that and multiply by 3 again. Now, we're lazy. We don't like doing it like that. So we're just going to use index notation. That's what it's for, right? OK, now, just like before, do you notice how many 3's are there here? It's the third term, and it's got two 3's. How many threes are there here? One. It's the second term, but there's, there's one lot of the ratio. And then how many threes are here? One. Zero. The, the none of them, of right? It's, it's n minus one. Yeah, n minus one. It's the same thing we saw before, right? Except term n, it's not a and then you add some stuff. It's a and then you multiply. So in fact, I'm not even going to write anything. I multiply by some number of the common ratio. How many? It's always. One less, one less than what you had, which is, like we said, what we notice here. So that's to the power of n minus 1. So far, so good. Are you OK there? All right, now, I'm not going to have a look at this just yet. This takes a bit more thought to develop. But all of this stuff that you just identified, this is kind of like a little playground that you can work within. Just like we saw things and applications of arithmetic progressions, we can do the same with geometric progressions. A lot of the applications we're going to see have to do with money. Some of them have to do with, just look through the window in a second, for, the, for a second out there. Um, every time light passes through that window, a little bit of light is reflected back out. Not much, because they're clear windows, but a, but a little bit, right? Either reflected or absorbed. If I had a whole bunch of panes of glass, and in fact, you can look all the way through to like a few more panes of glass through there, you see a percentage of light gets reduced every time. You might start with like, say, 100% of the light. And then the next one through, you only get 10% less than that, right? And then you get 10% less than that. And then you get 10% less than my arithmetic starting to struggle. It's going to be 72 point something or other, OK? So you can see here, these quantities are getting smaller, not by addition or subtraction, but by division. You following? 